Everybody, um, I'm going to start with an apology for leaving early. I've got to uh, go and talk. I've got some precious television time, which um, you, you know, for us in this campaign, is hard to come by. So I need to, to leave early, which is a pity because I think tonight is going to be a really interesting evening with some really expert speakers and some, you know, some really useful information and ideas to, to sort of work on from here. I wanted to say a little bit about the, the election campaign as it is at the moment. And I was at an event last night uh, being hosted by a group of students where the question was coming up about why is it that the election campaign in the UK, and it may not be the same, of course, in all EU member states, but why has, it, has migration defined the debate here so much? And some of the answers that were coming forward was, well, you know, part of this is a strategy. It's a strategy that, that's come you know, from some of the more populist parties, certainly um, some of the more you know, extreme parties. In terms of, if you really want to get people worried, if you really want to get people thinking about who's in charge, then you know, migration is an old and trusted friend in the British political scene for that. And we've seen that with quite a number of elections, national elections, certainly in, in this country. So it exemplifies very much the issue about who is making decisions because it's about people. And certainly some of the parties that have been most concerned about who's making the decisions are not, it seems to me, so worried about who's deciding about banking regulation or issues around climate change. But this is one where they think it has traction. So if you want to have a discussion about who's really in charge, who defines our country, who decides you know, who's here, then the issue about border control is a really strong one. And it also is one which touches a lot of people in terms, I think, of themes about security, um, their own personal security, their own sort of identity in many respects. And that certainly the issues that come up in when people are discussing about why it is their concern are actually a large number of the social issues. It's about access to services. It's about that whole social contract and the way in which people feel they're included. And the National Health Service is the one that starts, you know, tends to head the list. You know, you might be mo more worried about the international trade agreements on that and how they're going to affect the NHS. But NHS, and it's not about the number of workers in working in the NHS from countries outside the UK, for whom, you know, we have to be extremely grateful because that system would crumble without them. Uh, it's about schools, it's about crime, um, imagine, in many cases, and about jobs. Housing tends to be down the list, which, given the situation in London, I think is quite surprising. So it is concerns about, you know, those, that social contract. For many, and I think it's true to say of quite a number of second and third generation migrant background people. It's also about losing what you've struggled so hard to gain. And this feeling that new groups coming in are directly in competition with you 
And I've certainly had it said to me that particularly if you're looking at white Europeans, you know, people from various other ethnic backgrounds feel doubly insecure, feel that, you know, if push really came to shove, they would be in great difficulty. And I think this is one of the things about the so-called debate on migration, which is so tragic, is the way that it's used to actually make people feel very insecure, very suspicious of each other, and rather than operating as a society as a whole. And instead of us actually <coughs> and fighting the you know, system in terms of financial systems, in terms of you know, the whole issue about benefits, the cuts that are going on there in our social services, it's another part of the divide and rule which is there. The Greens certainly in this country and very strongly in the European Parliament as well have been a party which has, I think, been extremely positive about migration and people's rights to move, people's rights to be treated equally wherever it is they're living and to be treated with dignity. We've certainly supported free movement um, and indeed, you know, we're very active in working against the transition period. We took the view that if you were an EU citizen, there well, shouldn't be a different set of classes of EU citizen. You were entitled to the same rights coming, in, you know, those of us from the UK moving elsewhere in the European Union. I think often get forgotten in this debate. There are at least as many UK nationals who've moved to live, work, you know, within other countries in the European Union as we come here. But certainly we had a feeling when we still saw what was happening in 2004, something that could have been better managed in terms of information that went to people, in terms of people understanding the responsibilities that were there from the state, but we weren't contesting the issues about numbers. And that, that question, I think, about the rights that people had being able to access those rights, not having to beg for them, not having to fight for them, is what we feel we're about as a political party. And we've certainly seen a hell of a lot of myths and um, you know, scare stories going on. But one of the things that I've done in the European Parliament, and it's one of those, you know, there are those certain bits of legislation you talk about it and you see people's eyes glazing. <coughs> wait. And one of those that I've worked on for 10 years is um, romantically called the Coordination of Social Security System. So it's about your social security rights if you live and work in another EU member state. Highly technical, really, really mind-numbingly highly technical. Okay. <laughs> you know, trying to get unanimity at that point between 28 member states and co-decision with the European Parliament. And we managed to get stuff in there about speed of response, you know, service standards, etc. We still wait for them to be implemented. But, you know, you suddenly realise that it, it, I mean, you knew it was important in terms of people's lives. They're yeah, really important. But there was a particular conference I was at with the, what was called then the Friends of the Previous Regulation, the Friends of 1408, the small group, uh, when the Daily Express in this country, and for those who don't know the Daily Express, um, had a front page about, you know, 485 million people were being titled to UK benefits. And you thought, somebody has noticed this regulation. Um, <laughs> it, doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that 485 million people will move to the UK. And I think this is the way in which it gets used. But because people have a right doesn't mean that everybody rushes to do it. Germany probably thought that everybody was going there. France probably thought everybody was going there. You, you know, because everybody always thinks they have such generous benefit systems. But of course people are going to leave friends, family, home, society, you know, for the benefits of sort of sense of quid on job seekers and allowance or whatever. Um, so I've imagined. But that's the way in which you've had this sort of unholy alliance in many respects of stoking up the concerns, stoking up the fears. The British press has certainly been there with them. And I think that one of the things that this meeting tonight is trying to do is actually put some rationality back into this, to actually put some other human faces into this whole discussion, to really try and reclaim this debate from its utter peril. 
and put it back where it belongs, which is in society in general. Thank you. Thank you.